think of right now with this Black Lives Matter, this huge movement right now that's going on in terms of the entertainment industry. Um, do you think that there's going to be more ambiguous casting for um, actors? Like, do you think, because my perspective on the whole situation as an actor um, in the area is I don't get a lot of opportunity to audition for a lot of things because I'm not white. And this is my perspective, but it seems like from the area I'm from, where I'm auditioning, it seems like 70% of the roles are white, 25% of the roles are either African American or African American, and then 5% tend to be wild cards, which I think I fit into that category of being mm -hmm. Spanish or Asian. So I honestly get a lot of auditions for like 40 year olds that are more ambiguous, but do you think with what's going on right now, um, that that's going to change the industry? So I, I, you know, I just tell you what I really think. And again, to quote William Goldman about show business, no one knows anything. <laughs> um, I, you know what, I don't, I don't think it will change things in the sense that, you know, in 1968, uh, there were mass, uh, uh, in fact, part of Washington, D.C. burned down after the assassination of Dr. King. And um, uh, so you want to talk about protest. And my great aunt and uncle can literally remember National Guard tanks driving up, you know, northwest Washington. To, to, to quiet down the unrest. Yeah. So I think over time, incrementally, slowly, it does change. Um, the, the, there's the, I wanna say the woman who, and I could be wrong, but the woman who played the, um, there's no other way, she was a servant, she was a housekeeper and Gone with the Wind, was nominated for an Academy Award and I, as supporting, and I think might have even won, but wasn't physically allowed into the movie theater to collect her Oscar. Wow. And think about the roles, Hattie something, think about the roles that would have been available to her as an actress in mm -hmm. 1940s Hollywood. And then I'm trying to think of who the actress that won and was able to collect it on stage was, and it was kind of like, it was this thing where it was, that were they gonna let her in the uh, auditorium or not? Because it was still segregation. And ultimately she forced her way in at the last second. They weren't gonna let her in. They said they would, they planned not to, they let her in. Um, and then you have a, a, a performer like a Sidney Poitier come along, right? And really change what audiences and who they're interested in watching. and. Um, because ultimately Hollywood is gonna do, despite what anybody thinks, they're, they're gonna do what they, they perceive and or they know to be true. That you can say that Hollywood does a lot of things very badly, but I would purport to you that the one thing they do very well is monetize their product to the maximum. And so, I, you know, I think what you're talking about is a societal change is gonna be the shift. I don't. It's the chicken and egg, but I don't think it's if you all of a sudden put different people on shows that, that would be it. It would be more like people would, there's going to be some star that comes along, like a Sidney Poitier, right? Someone who, from Indian descent who's just very charismatic and has that sort of, again, people just want to spend time with him or her, right? Mm -hmm. And then they're going to become huge, just huge, kind of like a way Tom Cruise, uh, you know, after Risky Business is going to be that kind of a thing, or the Tom Hanks after a big, or, or you know, a, a, a Meg Ryan after Sleepless in Seattle. And all of a sudden that person's going to become huge and they're going to open the door for many more to follow. And, and I think that that's the more likely route that that would happen. <laughs>